we're in Brighton with the wonderful Jessica and Claudia to do some rock pulling, which is my favourite thing in the world yeah. to do. Would you like to briefly introduce what you do on YouTube? Uh, I have a YouTube channel where I talk about chronic illness, disabilities and LGBTQ plus things in a kind of fun and friendly, educational, informal way. Great! Brief. <laughs> yeah. And I'm her sidekick wife. <laughs> nice! Great high self-esteem there. Um, firstly, most important question, what colour nets do you want? Uh, blue, not yellow. <laughs> Red then. And these are very fancy ones. Wow. I, bought, I bought the expensive ones. Okay, so it was low tide a while ago, so we just need to keep an eye on the tides. It will be coming in, but let's just get going. Yeah. Okay. I have no depth perception, so I can't tell how far away the rocks are, so... Well, if they're getting bigger, then you might be falling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, we want to go out as far as possible now, and then we'll work our way back inshore as we go along. Okay. Um, so be careful, it's slippy. Yeah. You are the most stylishly dressed rock pooler I have ever seen. It's amazing. She just goes shopping in Asda, and people are like, have you been to a wedding? She's like, no. <laughs> so, to start off rock pooling, you get a bucket and you fill it a little bit with water. That way, anything you catch, you can keep it nice and wet. That's a lot of water. Oh, was only meant to be a little bit. Well, it was just we'll, we'll be <laughs> we'll be carrying it around, so you can pour out some of that. Okay. First off, we're not just looking for animals. Uh -huh. There's also seaweed here, even though it's really easy just to forget it and walk on it. This green, like the really green stuff, like the proper seaweed looking. Yeah, thing. this is called sea lettuce uh -huh. oh, and you can, you, you can eat it i <laughs> probably really want some edible seaweed it's i really mean good for you. i normally oh, you would I wash it seaweed. first it's all a fad, but, eat seaweed, but it now. is really good for you yeah. so the best thing to do is to stick your net in the water give it a rootle around the edges where there's weed or even better to lift up a rock and see what's underneath okay. this up and there is something under there I'll be very impressed because as the first rock I doubt there will be much oh, oh there's a brittle star <laughs> there are several so you, so you can see like Aww. most starfish they have five arms yeah but unlike most of the other starfish brittle stars are really fast and they actually wriggle around quite a bit more Oh, it looks like mr. ball legs What's Mr. <laughs> Ball Legs? From um, the Santa Clarita diet on Netflix. Oh. Yeah, you got to watch it. Where's its head? Oh, okay. uh, so it doesn't have a centralised head as such. Um, so the the food, the entrances of the mouth, the anus is all in that central disc on the underside. Okay. Um, but each of these arms also has an awful lot of nerves. And if one breaks off, they can grow more ones. Oh, oh, so yeah, first type of starfish. Are you okay? Just to remind you all, this is flat to me, okay? So how long have you been living in Brighton? How many years? Ten. Ten years? Ten and years. in that time, have you ever been rock pooling? Never in Brighton. No? No, like, we went to Cornwall and went rock pooling. Yeah. Why didn't we go rock pooling in never Brighton? Thought, we never thought that you could down here for some reason. That's a hermit crab, I think. It is a hermit crab! Oh, Good spot! So they find a shell, but empty shells of the right size are an incredibly scarce resource here. And so they will fight with each other yeah. over who gets the right size shell. When you see a hermit crab out of its shell, it's longer, more like a lobster than like a crab. So it just like and it, it Yeah, it itself. curls itself around. So now you can see it's got its tiny little Hi. front claws. Hello. Mm -hmm. What did you find? It moved really quickly. Yeah, they always do. Gotcha. Oh, wow! <laughs> I've never seen one of these crabs before. Oh, there were like three oh, of them there. Fantastic. It's a porcelain crab. Oh. They only grow about this big and they you only find them on the underside of rocks, which is oh, why they're really hard to spot. Like we just 
disperse their little family now. But... They'll be fine, I'm sure. <laughs> They're still wet, but good spot. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> High five. So do you often go looking for nature? Yeah. We love it. Yeah? I like foraging mushrooms. Not so much wet nature, to be honest. Foraging mushrooms? Yeah. You've got to be good at knowing your mushrooms in order to forage she them. Is. Well, I only pick the ones I know. You can hold this, yeah, there is a fish just there. So this is a sea scorpion, also known as a bullhead. Um, and it doesn't have a swim bladder, so it sinks when it's not swimming, a bit like oh. sharks. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> that was a great one. <laughs> I'm trying to see if it has one continuous dorsal fin. No, it's got two dorsal fins. Yeah. So this is a goby rather than a blenny. Oh. Um, but they are very similar fish. And are I... they in the same family? No, I don't think they are. Oh. But they do just look incredibly similar. And they all come in loads of different colors because they camouflage really well. So you can't base it on the coloring. So the dorsal fin is the one that runs along the back. If you think like a dolphin's fin, it's the dorsal fin. So a blenny will have a single one going all the way down the back, whereas a goby will have it split into oh, sections. Okay. I must say, I do you feel quite epic? Like an adventurer. <laughs> so this is a bigger shore crab. Oh, yes. And this one is a female. Yeah, so you can see how it's rounded with a little bit of a tip at the end. It's a pretty yeah. one. We should rename you Claudia the Crab Hunter. That's three different species now. My mushroom foraging training of yeah. eyes or something. Got a knack for it. Bigger than the other ones we've seen, certainly. The trouble is they're quite jumpy prawns. Yeah. So, oh, amazing. You can see yeah. all the different legs. So they'll have about 10 to 14 pairs of legs. Each one specialized for a different thing. What? Some of them are strictly speaking legs. Some of them are like things that used to be legs that are now something different. So at the front, you've got Wait, the ones with- so things that used to be legs yeah. that are now something different. Yeah. So imagine you start off with 14 sure. pairs, so 28. As you do. As you do. Um, but you think, actually, I don't need that many to walk. I could quite do with something to waft oxygen over my eggs um, right. so that they grow better. So you develop those. So that is a close relative of the barnacle. Ah. I know, they look nothing like each other. No. But imagine that stuck on its back and then some of those legs that I was talking about get loads of feathery bits on them and they waft out of the barnacle to catch filter feed. So, and bring question, yeah. is a barnacle also tasty? <laughs> Probably, but not worth the effort. No. Oh, that is coming. <laughs> coming in first. What was your favourite? Finding that big prawn. Yes, big prawn. the massive prawn. Uh, the porcelain crab. Porcelain crab. I think that was my favourite <laughs> too. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, I hope you had so fun. Yeah, it was yeah. fun. Yeah. And uh, now, as a non-science person, you can go out and learn more about nature. Well, yeah. Now we actually know more about rock pulling. Yeah. And they are on your doorstep. They are. Put so. your finger in it sometimes. Yeah. Just get your hands mucky. Yeah. Cool. So thank you for joining and see you for another one. <laughs> Can we keep the net? Oh, you're going to say something. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs>